<laughs> you can't giggle though, otherwise okay, you're fired. Yeah. yeah. You're like Trump on The Apprentice, you know, you're fired. So, don't do that, that encourages me, okay? All right, we ready? So you guys get this experience face to face. If you are watching this YouTube video, in which I expect at least 100 views, and who knows, maybe I'll get a little side gig going with all my YouTube video clicks in the channel. Uh, you're watching this at home after making snow angels and shoveling your driveway, and you are seeing this, and we had a snow day. To my Thursday face-to-face -face class, can I get an amen for a snow day, huh? Would you guys clap it up, a little energy? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Maybe, okay. <laughs> so uh, they're already lobbying Principal Darren and Mr. McNulty, but it's good to keep it light because we do have a pretty serious topic with anxiety, depression, and suicide prevention. Truthfully, you guys, I used to ask my classes if you, um, uh, Mrs. Canfield's coming in and interrupting this virtual lesson, but it's all good. Sometimes it's good. That's the highlight of the video. Sometimes yeah, baby. Uh, because, uh, Courtney. Oh my God, you filmed me without me asking. Oh my God. The advancer works, by the way. So good. All right. So it's good. All right. I was, I was so wondering you, if I need to keep digging or no. Oh, this is perfect. Good. Right. I'll just use it for now, and we'll go from there. I have a pass to borrow, Anna. Is that okay? No. Go ahead. Go no. ahead. Okay. We may just Seriously, rest we actually. Can. I'm not going to restart yeah. the video. Forget it. Yeah, you're not restarting. You guys got a snow good. day. You can go through all the shenanigans. Maybe it's more yeah. efficient if you're at home right now doing this. So, here we go. So this is just an open um, question as far as COVID-19 and what we saw. Two, three years ago during the lockdown, the flatten the curve is a real uptick in some of these uh, mental health concerns. You can see here and go through the slide. Uh, initially, you guys were about sixth grade, I think, when this happened. It feels like it was 20 years ago to me, but it was only three. Um, it was actually this week. So it was the week after Team State. It would have been for tomorrow's snow day. They sent us home three calendar years ago. So kind of crazy to look back on that. So you guys are definitely sixth grade, um, nervous, anxious, depression, loneliness. So, and then you can see here by July of 2020, this is an old graph, but about half of all Americans thought coronavirus had made a negative impact on their mental health. So we're plowing through that stuff. Um, who knows with um, here, this is a general statement about mental health and well-being, uh, substance abuse and things like that picked up. and so really a window for you guys into how people cope with stress, the unknown, anxiety, depression. All I know is uh, Governor Evers got reelected and I usually don't make any blanket political statements. So this is going on the YouTube. He would not have won reelection if he would not have deemed liquor stores essential. So liquor stores stayed open, so did um, you know, Walmart and stuff like that, and yet other things closed, like Kohl's department store. You didn't have to buy socks and underwear, apparently, but you had to buy, you know, alcohol. And so if you go back to that, it's a real window into how people deal with mental health and uncertainty. One of my aunties lost about 60 pounds. She was afraid of getting coronavirus. She's about 10 years older than me, and she got in really good shape, maybe the best shape of her life since finishing as a college student at UWM, you know, maybe 30 years prior. And so other people, they called it the COVID-19, maybe there was weight gain, there were mental health things, and obviously there was a real uptick in uh, substance abuse and things like that. So we already had this leading question, but rating our mental health is a little bit trickier because there's ebbs and flows, there's day-to-day, -day, there's circumstances, there's situations, uh, but this is uh, just a good starting point. So if you had a sore throat, a rash, um, you know, you broke your leg, what would you do? The obvious thing is, you know, monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off, bumped his head, right? Mom would call the doctor. So your mom would call the doctor. So the flip though, if you had painful relationships, scared, unloved, etc., if you felt sad or scared, sometimes it's like, hey, have a bowl of nails for breakfast, grab some OJ, and, and buck up. And so we don't look at our mental health um, sometimes like we do if I had an infection in my knee and they were like, Dubs, you have an infection in your knee. You have a staph infection. You need to take you know, high grade uh, antibiotics. It wouldn't be the same if I had say a chemical imbalance 
in my brain with say serotonin. It might look differently or how I would view it. So the stigma, the acceptance, etc., with mental health treatment has definitely improved. This in your notes, just highlight just some key terms. So mental health is a starting point is a state of emotional, psychological well-being in which an individual is able to use his or her cognitive emotional capabilities, function in society, and meet the ordinary demands of everyday life. And so video we watched later, you guys will watch it live, the Ed Puzzle for the virtual kids if that happens. Um, they'll give you, they'll show you the first girl, Lana, she can't get out of bed. And on that scale, I said one to 10, she would be more closer to a 10. She's not able to get out of bed, you know, basic hygiene, go to school, do some of these ordinary demands that a 15, 16 year old person should be able to do. So in other words, feeling good about yourself, your relationships, coping with the normal demands. There's a guy, Ray, he's the second character vignette. He's on the basketball team. Coach is gonna start him, he's a sophomore. I think he's in the student government and he's got a couple quizzes that it's, you know, to end the week and he's overwhelmed and anxious and uh, that would be, you know, maybe there's a problem there in his case with some generalized anxiety. So every year there's 44 million American adults that experience a serious mental health condition. This is right from our survey last year. So 28% um, said they were dealing with depression. Most of these numbers are almost double in our female student population, not quite. I think for this one, it's right around 40%. And then for the boys, it's around like uh, just under, or just over 20%. So, um, so anyhow, anxiety. So this one is 49%. So let me rephrase my math here. It's 63% in the girls and 35% in the boys. So obviously 63% is not quite double 35, but it's close. So um, all the Beyonce single ladies in here, you guys are being affected more for whatever it's worth right now with mental health. Uh, Self-harm, we talked about this is 20% in our student population. So this isn't like, hey, kids out there. So. You know, we need a, a big takeaway is once we get through this quick seminar, it's like, this is High School Musical 2.0, like we're all in this together, talking to someone, seeking help, seeking good coping skills, looking at broadly your overall health, you know, sleep, diet, exercise, making social connections, um, connecting with, you know, even if it's Mrs. Canfield doing a crazy dance, or, you know, maybe a trusted adult here in the school, uh, maybe a boss, a coworker, you know, in other words, just not feeling isolated, alone, etc., which is tough when there's an underlying mental health condition. So suicide itself, so I tried to put a lot of notes in red that I want you to copy in. So I, I really like this slide. Uh, it says if you read left to right like you were taught in grade school, you don't matter, give up. And then if you read top down, you matter, don't give up. And so um, I get a kick out of that just because it's, it's perspective, right? And so that shows sometimes maybe even our own kind of thought process as we're going through things. And so, so suicide, again, just some of these definitions. So obviously a starting point, it's the taking of um, one's own life. So the suffix side, meaning death, you think of like insecticide, herbicide, uh, et cetera. These are just some stats. So it's the 12th leading cause of death overall. Here's the thought of the day. I'm middle-aged, I'm Caucasian. If I were a military veteran and divorced, I would be more at risk for suicide than, than you guys. You might be actually like talking to Principal Darren or some other adult going, hey, my teacher seems a little off. There's something going on. You know, or you might be in your own, so not necessarily me as a teacher and a student teacher related, but maybe it's your favorite uncle who um, fits some of those um, kind of demographic or, or breakdowns as far as like prevalency rate. So, but obviously as teenagers, um, you know, you guys have your whole life in front of you. It's a huge issue and you guys are the audience regarding uh, mental health. So. You can see here, white males account for 70% of all suicides. Um, so one of the things to consider is first up at the bottom, 
there's about 47,000 suicides and homicides are at about 20,000. So those vary, um, but so with teenagers though, the rate tripled through the 60s, through the late 90s, we've seen actually a gradual decline and that's, that's good as far as I think people are seeking help with uh, their mental health and not refusing to not talk to somebody. This at the bottom, when I said that thing about white males, so more females attempt, more males actually commit suicide. The main thing there is with, uh, with that is access to firearms and familiarity to, the, to using firearms. So I know, for example, like, and this is not stereotypical, but maybe it holds, but my sons and I, we all hunt. My wife and my daughter do not. And so they would have more familiarity with firearms, et cetera. So if a person is having a serious mental health issue, obviously gun safes and locks and things like that to keep uh, firearms, um, you know, where they're um, readily controlled, et cetera. It's always a cry for help though. You don't want to minimize like non-lethal attempts at suicide, certainly. So that's something where you don't want to minimize that more females attempt, but that's, um, for what it's worth, it's also like a true false question or quiz. So it's, um, and then more females are actually, are affected more by anxiety, depression. The one area of depression where it's even is bipolar depression, and we'll talk about that, where there's high highs and low lows. So that's a particular type of depression. These are just, as you put your notes in, what the definitions for depression and anxiety are. These are just some major crises that youth deal with that are in our textbooks. So when you go back to chapter four and stress, Remember we said there's paper cuts and then there's the, you know, the day to day hassles. I mean, I sat down on the couch this morning, I spilled coffee all over my carpet because I bumped my arm on something and you know, the hassles, right? And it's like, uh, this is more like major life things where um, change in residence, divorce, rejection of peers. And I think some of these you interject like the social media platforms, et cetera. So, this is the math equation that you're gonna fill in. So typically, you have this long-standing problem. So it could be a number of things here. So this typically would be um, you know, something going, but many people would say like, let's just say, I'm gonna put down GAD, general, generalized, general anxiety disorder, or generalized anxiety disorder, or maybe um, I mentioned bipolar depression where there's a, a condition with high highs, low lows, and then there's um, oftentimes a trigger. Years back, I had a student who completed a suicide and a girl broke up with him. And he was a sophomore, it was his first girlfriend, and uh, you know that's something where I was wrapping my head around that, not understanding always what's going on, but that was the trigger. I have a video where, um, kid gets busted for alcohol usage and he's kicked off the team and dad's part of the teaching staff. I think he's like a vice principal at the school and he locks himself into this room. I'm just no good. I let everyone down. And then there's these really intense feelings and then this impulsive self-harm. So that is um, kind of the, you know, the general sequence we see. Typically there are you know, there's this underlying condition in 90% of all cases. So, um, one second. If I locked up the screen, here we go. So at the bottom there, 90% of the time, depression, anxiety, or another mental health disorder. I will tell you this though, just because you are, and I shouldn't say just, it's a tough adverb, but because you are dealing with depression, that does not mean you are suicidal. If everyone was suicidal that was dealing with depression, I showed you the thing, 44 million people are dealing with some sort of underlying mental health condition. So don't see those two as like, like a domino. Like if you have depression, then you are looking at suicidal indices. That's not the case. So one thing that, there's a theory out there about decreased serotonin in the brain. This would be back to my example of like 
you know, maybe a staph infection in my knee and taking antibiotics. So from a, typically it's a temporary thing, but there are some people that are taking various medicines since, you know, maybe adolescence or when they were first diagnosed. So serotonin is considered a happiness hormone. It's an important regulator, a lot of bodily functions with um, everything from temperature regulation to uh, just moods, et cetera. So they think in individuals with high anxiety. Um, the theory I believe is that with the anxiety, a person triggers these anxious thoughts and that's very taxing on the body. And as a result, there can be this depletion in serotonin. And with depression, it could be um, you know, just a reduction for whatever the reason. So it'd be no different than a person maybe getting an insulin shot and dealing with juvenile diabetes or things like that. Um, so these are, again, some of, there's also, again, part of the environmental conditions. So are things that have happened from an experiential standpoint. So if a person is, you know, they've attempted suicide previously, they've been sexually assaulted, they're isolated, they've moved a lot, they're dealing with uh, drugs, alcohol. We won't study addiction and drugs, alcohol till fourth quarter, but that's a huge red flag because that impairment lowers inhibitions, it intensifies feelings, it's not a good coping skill to say, well, I'm dealing with this, so I'm going to drink, you know, a bunch of shots of whiskey or whatever to cope. And then obviously there's natural consequences to that. So um, you can see here the warning signs, the social media stuff, the red flags. So always take those serious. These were symptoms. This is just a review from the WebMD thing we did with depression and appetite and energy. And you saw it too, I thought that was interesting on the WebMD uh, slides that men are more likely traditionally to give up doing something they like. So they used to love playing golf or they couldn't wait for NBA basketball season or gosh, I'm being pretty stereotypical with you know this proverbial Jimmy Jack in my brain, but whatever the male used to enjoy doing, they all of a sudden give that stuff up when they're dealing with depression. And they also maybe some aggression and irritability and things like that. Whereas for females, a little more withdrawn, sad, things like that, at least on that WebMD slideshow yesterday. So a little more social isolation and things like that. So they may still be running track and field, but they're dealing with, um, so they don't give up something they necessarily enjoy doing typically like men do. So I thought that was interesting. So what do we do? Hopefully you recognize this, this Acknowledge Care Tell or ACT. It's so funny, this is a question on the quiz. It's like, what does ACT stand for? And it's like, assert, crusade, tattle, and I've got like these like three kind of faux pas or fake examples and then acknowledge, care, tell. And so it's one question out of 50 on the multiple choice. Obviously I want you to know this general progression so you acknowledge it, you ask the person about it, hey, you posted this, you said that, are you serious, blah, blah, blah. Then you provide whatever that appropriate care is. You walk them out on their shoes, you empathize, you ask questions, you, you know, you're doing those things that, hey, let's go for a hike and take our mind off it. And then obviously telling a trusted adult. So it's a question on your quiz next week out of 50, but yet obviously big picture stuff, not everything can be measured on a quiz. So I want you to take the way, I want to have this takeaway, and this is a uh, key point of understanding, but yet obviously it's slice of life, right? Acknowledge, care, tell, and making this your own, but not keeping secrets and things like that. So the do here, so listen, stay calm, be honest, and then of course do not. Um, nobody gets like a, a Willy Wonka golden ticket and gets to dip out. So it's everyone's responsibility. Um, this is the 988, so we read the article of the week here. So text or call, that's a huge takeaway as well. And then you see these posters up. This is stuff where if you were to post on this app, um, from there it automatically goes to our building administration. So this is not just like, hey, this kid was saying this, or it, it allows you to uh, report if there's like a real outlier. 
and, and one of our students, like this kid was on the bus saying, you know, other things. That, this, so this gets a little broader. Or, hey, this kid was on the bus saying that he's being abused at home, or, and you can report this, and obviously it's done anonymously, and it goes to the powers that be here at the school. At the very end, I always like, you know, ending, like, on a good note here. So, like, these are the 10 things to look at for your mental health from a lifestyle wellness standpoint. The hardest thing is you don't feel like exercising when you're dealing with, say, depression or anxiety. But yet it's so good for you for a person to commit to that and just make themselves work out. Or, you know, maybe you don't feel like eating a fruit salad. You'd rather just have a donut or... And again, because mentally you're not, you know, maybe you're sleep deprived as well. That's a big thing where people, when they're dealing with this, rarely are they waking up like, oh, I feel great, I'm so well rested. They just, oftentimes treatment includes just having the person, um, you know, either sleeping pills or dealing with uh, ways to shut down at the end of the day. And then at the very end, just give me a summary just a you know a quick little Twitter post here, 180 characters. So just kind of an overview at the end. So that's all I got. Hopefully we're frolicking in the snow and uh, I don't know. You were talking alpine or however you phrased it. So hopefully you guys are getting your snow angel on. But we got to have virtual school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Courtney Pampooch, signing off. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>